Hello, and welcome to Mythical Entertainment Interviews. I'm your host, Jeremy Snow. You know me as Mythrandial. Today, Morgan Berry joins us to discuss her most recent role as Ichiro Hiko in The Boy and the Beast, and shed some insight on how she hit the ground running in the voice acting industry. So, yeah, how did you get started with voice acting? Uh, how did I get started with voice acting? Uh, it, it all happened pretty fast, actually. Um, despite being a huge fan of anime growing up and despite always wanting to be an actress, I never thought about voice acting before. Like, um, it never even occurred to me that, that the voice behind those characters that I love so much was, they were actors and I had no idea it was possible to be doing what I am today, but, um, I actually only started pursuing voice Mm -hmm. acting in 2014 and what started this whole journey was in November of 2013, Todd Habercorn was having a convention, and he called it Habercon. Yeah, right. And Yeah, I know. It's a clever name, right? And at this convention, hmm. um, he was holding a voice acting competition, and the winner of that competition would win an audition at Funimation. And so I decided, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I love acting, and I love anime, so why not give it a shot? So I did, and I ended up winning, and that's how I got my first audition at Funimation. And since then, they they kept calling me yeah, back for other definitely. stuff. So I, I'm I very grateful was for ask that. You that. Because it seems like your career just got started, and yet you're already taking on some big roles. So, what advice yeah. would you give to aspiring voice actors who want to hit the ground running like you have? Uh, definitely. Immerse yourself in the world of acting. Uh, Take acting classes, workshops, get involved with your school's theater department. And if you're not in school, uh, get involved with a local theater and just really hone your acting skills because that's what voice acting is. It's acting. And and, uh, honing those skills is very important if you want to be a voice actor. And so, yeah, definitely dive right into that. And it's a lot of fun. Stage acting, on-camera acting, it, it all it all counts yeah. as good experience. Um, so, speaking of voice acting and, and dubs and things like that, the the subtitle versus dub debate has been raging for as long as anime has been around in the U.S. Really, people are oh no, I love subtitles, or no, I only listen to dubbed work, etc. What do you tell people who insist that they don't enjoy dubbed work? So, what do you tell people to kind of bring them over and and listen to more of that hard work that fellow voice actors are doing? Well, I, I'm fine with both subs and dubs. I mean, I, I love both. And honestly, a lot of the times when people say they don't like dubs, it's because they compare it to the sub. They compare the English voices to the Japanese voices. But the thing about that is they're two different languages, so you can't really compare them because the way we say things is different. So, of course, it's going to be more exaggerated in, in the Japanese. Like, <laughs> yeah, <"Nani?"> exactly. <laughs> like we don't say, oh, right. we don't do that in the English language. Mm-hmm. We don't. It's just, it's not natural. And so, um, if you do prefer very mm-hmm. exaggerated reactions and line reads then yes the the sub is the way to go but in english it just doesn't sound natural so it's whatever you want it's a matter of opinion but i mean i would rather watch a a dub because i want to focus on the beautiful animation i don't want to have to read the subs at the bottom I want, yeah, I want to be able to hear it in English so that I yeah, can focus sure. on the beautiful uh, uh, as animation. As a follow up to that, I'd be interested. What work do you point people towards to say that is a quality dub? What's a really good dubbed work in your opinion? Um, if the acting is good, then I'd say that's a quality dub. And right, I'm man, just thinking like yeah, there's I'm a just lot thinking of like good dubs out there. Full like Metal you, you know, somebody's like, tell me man. a good dub. Like, what's the like first thing that jumps into your mind. Ooh, Code Geass and Full Metal Alchemist are two yeah, of my Full Metal favorites. Alchemist for sure. I remember mm-hmm. distinctly watching Full Metal Alchemist and saying, wow, like I haven't really heard a quality dub like this before, especially in the early episodes when Alphonse and Edward are kind of waxing philosophical about men being gods and resurrection and things like that. It was a very uh, authentic moment, I thought. Okay, so yeah, I agree. On that note, on that line, uh, who is your favorite voice actor and why? Yeah, I'm gonna make you choose. <gasps> oh, you I'm gonna make you make pick someone choose. out, call them out, 
And then everybody yeah. else you've ever worked with will be personally insulted and never want to talk to you ever again. <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. Oh, my gosh. This is so I tough. Should, I should start playing the Jeopardy. Uh, Why? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Can I pick three? Three? <sighs> Fine. All right. All right. Okay. Give me give me three. I'll let you do three. Because I am a benevolent okay. interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, let's see. I love Vic Mignana's voice. Always have, mm. always have, always will. And so he's one of them, okay. one of my favorites. Johnny Young Bosch, yeah. definitely a favorite. Yeah. I love him in Code Geass, and wow, everything he does sounds incredible. Mm -hmm. And uh, Caitlin Glass, okay. I love her both as an actress. As a director and as a person, she and as a friend, she's incredible. So, if I had to choose my ultimate favorite, it, it would be Caitlin Glass. But man, it's just I have so many favorites; it's so hard to choose. A lot of great, talented coworkers that you work with. That's a that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, speaking of talented coworkers, etc., um, how did you learn about your most recent project, The Boy and the Beast? I knew that Funimation acquired the rights for it, but I didn't know who was directing it, and I didn't know if I was even going to get to audition for it. But then I got a text from uh, the talent coordinator um, at Funimation, and she uh, texted me saying, hey, um, what's your availability to audition for this movie for Mike? And I was like, whoa, okay, cool. And so I gave her my availability, and I set up um, a day to go in, and it was kind of uh -huh. an, an audition, but not really, because Mike mm. wanted me for the role. It just really all came down to what the Japanese d directors thought of my, I guess, audition. So it was like I was, I kind of had the role, but I was, it was. Yeah, it was kind of up of in the didn't. air a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was going. Like they had an idea, like Mike, Mike wanted yeah. you to do it, but he just wanted to run it by. I said, I make sure that. They were on the same page, that kind of thing. Right, right. And the Japanese uh, crew, the the directors, they were they were very involved with this mm. movie more so than any other uh, in the past. Why do you think or that at is? least that's what Mike well, I think, was, was saying. Was there a specific reason why they were like really interested in in the development of this project? Yeah, I have no idea. And Mike <laughs> said he doesn't <laughs> know. Really and important. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Not sure why. Yeah, but um, it was really difficult though because um, I mean. I submitted, I went in and I recorded the lines for Ichiro Hiko. And Mike was like, okay, cool. Now, um, I guess we'll just wait and see what they think. And then I got called back in and he's like, cool, they loved it. Um, yeah, it's your that's, role. Yeah. It's, your, yeah. it's your role. You're, you're good. Yeah. And I was like, cool. And then he said, um, but there is this uh, one line that they, um, they gave me back notes. And I'm sure right. they did this for all the actors. Um, notes of what they wanted d slightly different when it comes mm -hmm. to the voice that we chose to use and what what was that and, what was yeah, that line so, was was I, there what was the specific thing that they wanted you to change about it for ichiro hiko they wanted him to be more okay. calm more more chill oh. is so chill like, not okay. your forte <laughs> Well, I can do chill. Uh, I mean, I, I voiced for Tokaku in Riddle Story of Devil, yeah, and she is super, super chill. chill. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can do chill, but it was really hard, though, because there was this one line in particular. Mm -hmm. I was Ichiro Hiko supposed to be excited. His dad is uh, is coming, and he sees his dad, mm -hmm. and he's supposed to get super excited. But for some reason, the directors wanted it to be chill. Mm. And I'm like, but his he's excited. And Mike was like, I don't know what they I don't know what they wanted. <laughs> we were both confused because, you know, in this scene, Ichiro Hiko is supposed to be excited. So you can't really be calm and excited at the same right. time. How, how are you the Those most two... calm, chill, excited person ever? <laughs> <laughs> right. And so um, in order to please both directors, oh. um, because, you know, they both had different ideas of what they wanted. Mm for this ca particular character and that particular line. Mm -hmm. And so in order to make both sides happy, I decided to go for a little airy kind of sound. Mm. 
I tried to sound calm and excited at the same time, which is kind of difficult, right. but I made it work and I guess they ended up liking it. So I'm that's glad. That's awesome. <laughs> that kind of, uh, that's interesting. I mean, wh when you went into voice acting, what's one thing, it kind of seems like something that you wouldn't necessarily expect, right? Having to net play to both directors, both the English voice acting director and then the Japanese director. I mean, what is that something that you weren't really expecting when you went into voice acting? Um, I don't know what I expected, actually. <laughs> yeah. it's, I didn't really go in with any expectations, actually. I had no idea what I was getting myself okay. into. Well, that's good then. No, no expectations mean you don't really get taken by surprise by anything. So that, could, well, you might be, but uh, not as much as if you went in thinking this is how it's going to be. It's going to be, I'm going to walk into a studio. I'm going to say some lines. I'm going to go home and, you know, so that's, that's good. Um, yeah. So what, speaking of the boy and the beast, what was your favorite scene from the movie? Oh, that's, that's, um, maybe without spoilers, okay, right? Spoiler free <laughs> scene, scene reveal. The thing about <clears throat> this is, mm -hmm. When you're a voice actor, you only see the scenes that you record for. Uh, and, and you didn't see the premiere. Yeah, I have <laughs> you yeah, haven't had, had a chance had, had to screen the it? Because I was um, at PAX. Uh -huh. Yep, so I have not even seen the movie that I'm in oh yet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, so well, sad. let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you, it's a great movie. <laughs> I had a feeling from what I've seen of it, it looks yeah. beautiful. I just uh -huh. haven't seen the whole thing. <laughs> okay. All right, you need to you need to maybe call up Scott Lonsky and tell him to send you over a copy of the film or something. So, right? <laughs> so you can you're like, can I screen my own movie, please? I need to know how how good it is so I can boast it about it to all my friends. Right. Um, <laughs> I need to I need to market this. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So we're we're just about done here, Morgan. But before before we leave you, I was just wondering if you had a, a project that you're working on that you'd like to talk to us about, or maybe a role that you're excited about voicing in the near future. Yes. Um, a few, actually. Okay. Um, Freedom Planet 2, is, it's my first role in a video game. I play the lead villain, Murga, and mm -hmm. I'm really excited about that game because uh, the cast for it is going to be amazing. The cast for the sequel, um, Christopher Sabat's a part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Lindsay Jones of Rooster Teeth has also joined the cast. Uh, Sarah Ann Williams, Josh Greeley. Mm. It's a great cast, and I'm super excited to be a part of it. And so that's going to be out next year. So okay. I look forward to that. And Freedom Planet too. Got it. <laughs> I got the role of um, Ayumu Uzura in Tokyo ESP, which I am oh. also excited about. The first two dubbed episodes of that show are up on Fun Funimation's website right now. So if anyone wants to check that out, excellent. And um. And also my first lead role in an anime series as Tokaku Azuma in Riddle Story of Devil. All, all 12 episodes are up on Funimation's website if anyone wants to check that out. Excellent. Well, thank you, Morgan. We really appreciate you taking the time today to talk about your roles. And um, yeah, we look forward to having you on our show again sometime. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. <laughs>